January 25th, Genesis 51 through Exodus 2.10. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for him. For such are the days required for those who are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him seventy days. Now when the days of the morning were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, I now have found favor in, the, in your eyes. Please speak in the, in the hearing of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Behold, I am dying in a grave which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. There shall you bury me. Now, therefore, please let me go up and bury my father, and I will come back. And Pharaoh said, Go up, bury your father, as he made you swear. So Joseph went went up to bury his father, and with him went all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as all the house of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's house. Only their little ones, their flocks, and their herds were left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great gathering. They then they had come then they came to the threshold floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, and there they mourned there for a great and very solemn lamentation. He observed seven days of mourning for his father, and when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a deep mourning of the Egyptians, therefore his name, its name was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond the Jordan. So his sons did for him just as he had commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, which Abraham had bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite as prop- property for a burial place. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers and all who went up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of your servants, of the God of your father. And Joseph wept and they spoke when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for I, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about, as it is today, to save many people alive. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Mechir, the son of Manasseh, were also brought up on Jesus, Joseph's knee. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God is surely, will surely visit you and bring you out of this land, to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he, put, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Now these are the names of the children of Israel who came to Egypt. Each man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Ishkar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All those who were the descendants of Jacob were seventy persons, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died 
all his brothers, and all that generation. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, who did not know Joseph, and he said to this people, Look, the people of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply and it happen in the event of war, that they join our enemies and fight against us, and so go up out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Pithom and Ramas, Ramas. But they, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were in. And they were in dread of the children of Israel, so the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them was made them serve with rigor. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the mid- Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Shifra, and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, When you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women, and you see them on their birth stools, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then you shall then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded, but saved the male children alive. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and saved the male children? And the midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. And so it was, because the midwives feared God, that he provided households for them. So Pharaoh, com- Pharaoh commanded all the people to all the people, saying, Every son who is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. And a man of the house of Levi went and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that it was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, dabbed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds, by the river's bank, and his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when they saw the ark among the reeds, she sent to her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me. I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and became her son. So she called his name Moses saying, Because I drew him out of the water. Matthew sixteen thirteen through seventeen nine. When Jesus came to, into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on the rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. 
and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes. and be killed, and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside, and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to me, for you you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to the disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me for whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it for what profits what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul for the son of man will come in the glory of his father and his angels and then he will reward each according to his works assuredly i say to you There are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up to the high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If it is your wish, let us make there, make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and do not be afraid. When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now, as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Psalm 21, 1-13 The king shall have joy over your strength, O Lord. And in your salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips, Selah. For you greet him with the blessings of goodness. You set a crown of pure gold upon his head and asked life life from you, and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in your salvation. Honor and majesty you have placed upon him. For you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord, and through the mercy of his most high, he shall not be moved. Your hand will find all your enemies. Your your right hand will find those who hate you. You shall make for them a fiery oven in the time of your anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour devour them. Their offspring you shall destroy from the earth, and their descendants from among the sons of men. For they intended evil against you. They devised a plot which they are not able to perform. Therefore you will make them turn their back. You will make ready your arrows and your string toward their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own strength. We will sing and praise your power. Proverbs 5, 1-6 My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding, that you may preserve discretion, and your lips may may keep knowledge. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, 
sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell. Lay hold of hell. Lest you ponder her path of life, her ways are unstable. You do not know them.